Welcome to The Supernatural Show, where we explore herbalism, the holistic, personalized, and nature-based practices with the power to change the world. I'm your host, Michelle Robinette, registered clinical herbalist and the founder of Pharmacon Supernatural, a company dedicated to the art of functional nature. Hi, I'm Rochelle Robinette, registered herbalist and the founder of Pharmacon Supernatural. And over the years, I have coached thousands of people to better health by combining herbalism, nutrition, lifestyle practices, and many more techniques with habit reshaping. Habits are the how, we do the what, and today I'm going to talk more about habits. Habit reshaping is something that I've been professionally focused on from the very beginning. Uh, I have seen and known that our pursuit of a happier, healthier life is about knowing both what to do and knowing how to do it. And very often we know exactly what we should do, eat more plants, sleep, exercise, find purpose and community, but we struggle with the how. Often people struggle with the how their entire life. That how is habits. Those habits can make up our lives, often on a minute to minute basis, and they can accumulate into our identity, our lifestyle, and our reality. There's a great quote about habits from Aristotle who said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And someone else said, you are what you do every day. The other thing about habits is that they make what we're doing every day easier, more frictionless, more like second nature, more flow. I compare them to ruts in the road. It's easy to stay in those ruts and it can be very difficult to create new ones, but it's possible to do exactly that. Habits are the grooves worn into the roads of our lives. And we really want them to be headed in the direction that we want to go. Uh, we also want to remember to enjoy the view along the way. Habit creation is also related to neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the ability of the brain to form and recognize new synaptic connections. It's the moldability of our mind. And it's just like the ruts in those roads, except these paths are in our brain. Thoughts, cravings, inclinations, dependencies, these are all part of habits and neuroplasticity. Now, actually, one of the questions that I've asked every single client from the beginning of my practice through today is what are your habits, dependencies, or cravings? And I don't ask, do you have any? I ask, what are yours? Because we all have them. These magnetic centers can be sugar, sex, screens, caffeine, you name it. They are surrounded by an often very tight weave of habits. So, we generally know what habits are and we know when we want better ones, but how do we go about rewriting our mental and life maps? For reshaping habits, I'm going to recommend five things. The first is to get as small and specific as possible. For example, I was coaching a client recently who wanted to stop staying up late at night and become a morning person again, uh, go running and see the sunrise. That is too many things to start with. We want to be smaller than that and more specific than that. So I recommended breaking it all the way down to just going to bed 
on time. Just committing to doing that one thing a few days a week to start. Small, achievable, and one action. If they woke up early, great. If they wanted to go running, great. If they saw the sunrise, awesome. None of those things were requirements to start. If they slept in, that was totally fine. If they laid in bed in the morning and scrolled on their phones instead of doing that late at night, that was also fine for now. So one baby step at a time because that is manageable. And over time, as we can accomplish that small goal over and over and over again, it becomes a habit. It becomes like second nature. It becomes frictionless, easy, integrated, and it establishes part of the foundation on which we can build the rest of our lives. Step two, then we get to add another thing. So people often ask me how it is that I manage to do all the things that I do. Uh, how do I live out all of these healthy habits, uh, which can seem like a ton of things, supplements and exercise and nutrition and all the healthy stuff. Um, but the thing is, they're all second nature to me at this point because very slowly over time, one step at a time, one foot in front of the other, I've built up these habits into my lifestyle. Uh, it's like building anything, right? We create the foundation first and it's brick by brick, step by step into the life that we want, the lifestyle that we want, the habits that we want to be defined by. And so the third part of reshaping habit is to replace it rather than just trying to quit it cold turkey. So if it's food or beverage related, consider giving yourself a replacement, again, instead of just trying to quit. Give yourself some alternatives. So herbal coffee instead of coffee, great herbal cocktails instead of alcohol, uh, books and magazines rather than screens, an exercise class instead of happy hour. Um, these can be like training wheels that come off eventually, but your goal is to support success, right? So make that success as easy for yourself as possible. And number four, with the replacements or the alternatives, give yourself lots of options, not just one, lots of options, and make sure that you like them. It's very hard to replace a habit with something else that we don't like, right? So you can work to that eventually, but initially make it very easy for yourself Give yourself lots of options. Make sure you like at least some of them. Um, these alternatives should be somewhat enjoyable, which allows, which allows them to kind of pull or entice you out of that habit that you're trying to change into the new direction that you're headed. So for example, if you hate running, don't make your alternative to a boozy weekend brunch uh, training for a marathon, right? You can work up to that over time, but start with something that appeals first. One very important part of this whole equation is that we want to make sure that that road is taking us where we want to go ultimately, right? So this is about the long view. For this point, I recommend spending an afternoon, it could be a day, a week, whenever you have time, spend some dedicated time reflecting on that road, on that direction of that road, on where it's headed and if it's headed in the direction that you want it to. So where are you right now? And where do you wanna be later on? How do you wanna be later on? How do you want to feel? All the things that matter to you, right? And then do a little bit of mapping related to what it's going to take to get there. What are the steps between here and there? Or what is just the direction of there? Even if you don't know how to get there, what's the direction, right? My whole, my whole career started that way. It was like, it's, it's over there somewhere. I don't know where exactly, but I'm gonna go in that direction, right? And it's similar to me, uh, it's similar to 
driving or hiking, right? So you're on this path and you may not know what's around the next bend, but you have to make that turn in order to then see and then in order to choose your direction from there, right? So make sure that your compass is calibrated and your direction is set. Do this once a year, you know, if you're really on a mission, you really want to stay focused, do it more often, do it monthly, do it every week, but make sure that that road is headed in the direction you want to go. So in this way, with these steps, right, with our global consideration, all the way down to the very, very small tactical actions of choosing one small habit at a time, uh, we can intentionally and with diligence totally transform our lives if we want or just create a nice new habit. Our bodies are constantly changing. Billions of our cells are replaced every single day. And so are our minds. Neurogenesis, the formation of new brain cells, happens every single day. So change is very, very possible. We also know from epigenetics that we can modify our gene expression, turn certain genes on and off, right? And this is done based on diet, lifestyle, mental health, and habits. We know that diet and lifestyle are the cornerstones of lives well lived and of longevity, of health span, not only lifespan. And we know that we make thousands of decisions every single day, something like 35,000 decisions. So the better our habits, the deeper the ruts in that road that's leading us where we want to go, the better our chances of being who and how we want to be. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you find this helpful. Um, please know that it's just the beginning of this conversation that we're going to have about habits. It's a huge topic. It's very juicy. It's fascinating. It can be so rewarding. I would love to know what sticking points you have around habits, what aspects of it you'd like for me to dig into more deeply in the future. Let me know in the comments and take care till next time.